Gillis was one of those streets that I spent a lot of time on. It was a long, steady hill that was fun to go down on a bike, but a real bear to climb. I would visit this house many times over the years. Remember this guy? A bit further up the hill was this house. Last February, I saw this guy while riding through the old neighborhood. Can you recognize him? Up a few more houses, at Ben Casey and Gillis, was this house. I never spent too much time there, but I did stop by sometimes. Going a bit further, my friend Anthony's house was just beyond. I still remember all the Rolling Stones posters that he had in his room. And just a few houses away from there was the house of our senior class president, also known as the Unknown Senior. And then my other friend from first grade lived here. This was a neighborhood that didn't connect to mine, so you had to go on Evers Road or through the alley. I used to love going to his house. I'd go through the alley and would pretend to be walking through the woods. I always remember that he had this creepy book full of monsters and werewolves and stuff like that. I used to love looking through it, even though the pictures really scared me. He says he still has it. I spent lots of time at Matt's house, and we got into more trouble than I have time to talk about here. But among the dumber things that we did, we discovered that we liked to play with this flammable chainsaw fuel that his dad kept in the garage. We call this glorious liquid fire water. Our favorite use for fire water was to pour a line of it in the street at night, wait for a car to approach, and then toss a match on it in hopes that the driver would come to a screeching halt as the flames erupted. We would then make our escape into the alley. One time before going out on a fire water mission, Matt did something different. Rather than taking the container with the fire water, he filled a plastic bag with the fire water to transport it to the site. I strongly voiced my disapproval because the bag was an unreliable container. But as we went to our usual spot, we argued about the safety aspect of what he was attempting, and I finally decided to abandon the Enterprise and started to walk home. Matt was frustrated with me and decided to go at it alone. At this point, I'm not quite sure what happened next, but when I was a few houses away, the bag of fire water somehow ignited, and Matt was desperately trying to put out the blazing fire that was burning in the middle of the street. All I could do was watch in horror and amazement as Matt battled the blaze, and I remember that as he did so, he looked like a demon dancing in the flames. That was the last time we attempted that stupid stunt. Of course, we cannot have a walkthrough of the old neighborhood without a mention of this place. I was pleasantly surprised on how well it looked, but I seem to remember more people being there when I was a kid. Next door was the old Mr. M convenience store my sole source of trading cards, such as wacky packages. When we were in high school, some bright entrepreneurs turned the place into a video arcade called Leon Valley Games. I, of course, was a regular there. I never did thank Chris for the many free games of Berserk he helped me out with. Greg was excellent at Gorf. And these two were usually found with me there. Forest Oaks was a microcosm of the real world, and the small experiences that we had there did a fantastic job at preparing us for the much larger world that lay ahead. For example, we were given a taste of ideological conflict as the wiser kids in the neighborhood debated whether Star Trek or Lost in Space was the better show. I was strongly rooted in the Star Trek camp myself, but my friend and cohort, Carl Blesser, was in the Lost in Space camp. Although after all these years, I'm pretty sure that I was in the correct camp, 
I think I have an understanding for the argument for Lost in Space. And then there was Battlestar Galactica, but we need not even go there. Personality types were always evaluated by the kids in Forest Oaks, and perhaps the best used method to determine if a potential friend and you were going to get along, you could always rely on the Saturday morning cartoon test. Although no formal rules or guidelines were ever developed, kids could judge each other based solely on their choice of cartoons that they would watch on Saturday. Such variables like, how early do you get up in the morning to watch the cartoons? Is your schedule strict or does it change? Do you have two shows that conflict and how do you resolve this conflict? And, most importantly, what are the cartoons that you choose to watch on Saturday? To this day, I'm completely perplexed as to why Carl Blesser ever watched Land of the Lost, and he didn't even seem the least bit ashamed to admit this. Even went as far as to sing the theme song and to tell me all about Slee Stacks. Marshall, Rill, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapids, struck their tiny raft. One common discussion I enjoyed having with other kids was centered on this cartoon. Questions were raised, such as, why did the government employ a rock band to pilot this spaceship? Or maybe, were they just posing for a publicity photo shot and not the actual astronauts? I thought that this second option was the more likely answer because the characters didn't seem to know how to fly the ship properly. But I did take the following question very, very seriously. What was the fate of the photographer? Unless the kid acknowledged that the photographer was obviously killed, I looked on him with contempt. After school television watching was also essential for our growth into adulthood. Reruns of Gilligan's Island and My Three Sons are what helped me to understand reality. Boys, for example, were expected to demonstrate a certain amount of working knowledge of World War II history, and there was no finer source of information on this subject than from reruns of Hogan's Heroes. Additionally, family values and artistic knowledge could be gleaned by watching reruns of The Brady Bunch and The Partridge Family. Sure, I guess that some people do watch too much television, but growing up in Four Stokes proved that it was also possible not to have watched enough television. And that can be just as bad. <laughs>